Welcome to the Arizona Clinical Informatics' educational video series on Cerner Power Chart. Today's lesson is lesson number four, Adult Admission History. This lesson will be focused on two items, the adult admission history and the patient preferred pharmacy. The task for the adult admission history is triggered upon admission of the patient and is found in Care Compass. Highlight the task and select Document. The power form for the adult admission history will appear. Note that future Cerner changes scheduled for future release will change this process significantly. Notice there is a view documentation pane and a menu pane. In some views, the menu pane is smaller to allow for more real estate. If you want to see the full menu, line your mouse cursor on the line in between the menu pane and the view documentation pane and drag to the right. This will expand the menu pane to a larger view. Notice the general information line is highlighted blue. Whatever line is highlighted blue, its data to be completed will be in that documentation pane. By clicking on the bottom Discharge Needs line in the menu pane, you will see that the data in the view pane changes. Clicking back to the general information line changes the user back to the beginning of the adult admission history. On the adult admission history, there are many fields to document on. On some patients, depending on their severity, the data may need to be filled out completely. But for the most part, the nurse needs to be completing as much data as possible on the patient, but may skip fields only if they are not relevant to the patient at this time. Notice the documentation boxes with red. These are fields that are required for the hospital to meet certain governmental promoting interoperability requirements with the electronic health record. Some are required and won't let you sign off unless you've addressed them. This is indicated by the red asterisk next to the lines in the menu pane. Please do not fall into the bad habit of only documenting on the required fields and leaving everything else blank. This is not good nursing practice and it endangers the patient. I want to briefly draw your attention to the date and time that's on the arrival to floor unit spot. Notice it says 10 o'clock. However, notice my stated documentation time states 1407 next to performed on. If I need to change this to reflect the time I actually began the adult admission history with the patient, I could change it here. I've changed the performed on time to 10 o'clock. There are different fields noticed within the documentation. There's a free text, date and time, radio buttons where only one choice can be selected, selection boxes where more than one choice can be selected, and pre-filled fields that generate data from other computer systems and from previous documentation. Complete everything that is relevant to the patient on the general information data. Please notice that there is a scroll bar to the right. You may have to scroll down to complete all the data in the adult admission history selections. Moving down to our next menu field, allergies, we see another area where we can add allergies into the chart. We won't overtly discuss this process again. This was covered in lesson number two. For now, follow the demonstration of adding an allergy of morphine with a drug rash into the chart. After entering the allergies on the patient, we will need to document on the required field, which is colored in yellow, and any other fields that are relevant to the patient. When you have completed, you'll need to select the Mark as Reviewed button. This is stating you have reviewed the allergies with the patient and or the family member. After the selecting the Mark as Reviewed button, you'll notice the reviewed date on the remaining allergies fill in. Moving to the advanced directive line, we see a required box that is yellow and red. This implies that it is a hard stop field and also a promoting interoperability or meaningful use requirements. 
we notice there are dithered fields that become activated based upon certain responses to the questions that we answer. In this instance, if I select yes, there are more fields that have now become activated. And if I were to select no, there are other fields that now become active. We will complete the process of answering the fields that pertain to the patient. Moving to the medical history and problems documentation, we can add a problem. We also discussed the process of adding problems in lesson number two. Let's add a problem of chest pain. Upon the completion of entering problems on the patient, there are two sections below the entry and review field. One is regarding certain symptoms based upon items that the nurse should determine on admission if the problem is present on admission, items such as pressure injury, central line, and etc. There is also a field labeled medical history reviewed. The nurse is confirming here that there has been a review of the medical history with the patient and our family member. The next menu line is home medications. For now, let's focus our attention on the home medications review field. There is only one choice here, follow up needed. A selection here indicates that the nurse obtaining the home med history was not able to obtain it for one reason or another. This will leave the medication reconciliation status bar with the exclamation mark in a blue circle under meds history. This is an indicator that the med history by the nurse is incomplete. The complete process of entering an accurate home med history will be discussed more in lesson number five. Part of the needs of obtaining a medical history is also to determine if the patient has a preferred pharmacy. The question for preferred pharmacy is here, but you will have to exit the adult admission history power form to enter the patient preferred pharmacy. This will be covered at the end of this lesson. Let's deselect the follow-up needed in the home medication reviewed section and entering home medications by selecting the document medication by history button. A new screen appears. In this instance, it's a blank screen, but if this was a patient that had repeated visits, there would be a list of past home medications here to review. Notice that the box that says medication history in the top of the screen. The nurse would utilize this if they were unable to obtain a home medication history at time of history or to document if the patient denies that they are taking any home medications. If the patient had no known home medications, the nurse would place a check mark here and then select the document history button below. This would complete the home medication history review and would change the reconciliation status bar from an exclamation mark with a blue circle to a green check mark. Please be a responsible nurse and go over the medication history with the patient and our family member for accuracy. This is a national patient safety goal and is also considered nursing best practice. But I want to add a home medication, so let us uncheck the known known home medications mark and select the plus add button. An add order screen populates. I can type in a medication to search for and select the enter key on my keyboard or click on the magnifying glass icon. A set of available choices appears based upon the search. More about proper medication selections will be discussed in lesson number five. I want to select the medication with the closest strength and form to the patient's home medication. In this instance, Reglan 5 milligrams oral tablet was selected. Once selected, a set of order sentences will populate in a pop-up screen. Select the order sentence that matches the closest to the home medication the patient is taking. The frequency and tab selection is the important feature. Ignore the number tab at the end of the order sentences. These do not apply to the home medications. Once highlighted, select the OK button. You could continue to search for more home medications, but for the demo purposes here, this patient was only taken Reglan, so we will select the Done button. You will see the home medication populate in the field. Also below, you see details on the medication. There are three tabs, Details, Order Comments, and Compliance. Let's select the Compliance tab. This is the documentation of how the compliance level of the patient taking the medication is. This should be mandatory, if attainable, on all patients' medications. This helps physicians and pharmacists determine which medications to continue and which time to resume those medications. 
While we're focusing on this, notice the box next to the phrase, leave med history incomplete, finish later. This would be selected only if the nurse isn't able to obtain a full home medication history as it will keep the med rec status as an incomplete one. Typically, the ED department would utilize this if only a partial med history is performed. Clicking on the document history button will save our data. We will be taken back to the home medications documentation in the adult admission history. You can see, because we selected leave med history incomplete to finish later, that the reconciliation status remains incomplete. The next few seconds will demonstrate the process of going back into the document by medication history and completing the home medication history. Now the reconciliation status for meds history shows complete with the green check mark. This lets the physician provider know that they can perform the admission med reconciliation. Moving on to the next section, procedure history. Any past surgical procedures that the patient has had can be added here. Historical data will also appear just like problems in home medication histories do. Select the plus add button to add a surgery. We want to add a procedure of cabbage. So we'll type that into the search bar. In this instance, our patient was able to tell us that she had a cabbage times three performed. So we can choose that option. If the patient isn't familiar with how many bypasses were performed, we could have selected just cabbage. Once the selection is made, it is highlighted blue and we can select the OK button. Here the nurse can get more specific as to year or age of the patient when they had the procedure and enter the information. If finished with procedure history, select OK. If more procedures are needed to be added, select the OK and add new button. You'll see the procedure was added to the list of procedures. If our procedure was the only one entered, we could move to family history. If there were more procedures to review with the patient, we could go over these with the patient and then select the Mark All as Reviewed button before proceeding to family history. Family history is historical as well. If there was data from a previous visit, it would appear here and we could review it. In this case, we have none listed and we need to select the plus add button. Default the family members are father, mother, brother, sister, grandparent. If more was needed, say three more grandparents, we could click on the add family member button. This would pop up the available selections to choose from. Please keep in mind, we're trying to build a family prevalence for illnesses and diseases. Here we added a second grandparent. Now under health status, we have a selection process of negative or unknown that we could select. If you want to remove a family member, say this patient doesn't have a sister, then I would right click on sister and select remove. The sister column disappears. In the columns under the family member, we can begin the process of going down through the process of selecting the responses. The white column represents a negative to the illness or disease. The light gray column represents a positive to the illness or disease. In this instance, we have stated positive to the patient's mother having depression. We can go one step further and describe what type of depression the mother has by double clicking on depression and fill in the necessary details. Once completed, it adds that line to the choices. Once completed, select the OK button. After completion, I need to select the family history has been reviewed and updated radio button. Now we come to the anesthesia transfusions information. It is within this section that you would indicate that the patient refuses types of blood transfusions, such as is respective of their religious and personal beliefs. The communication section is where you would see that data entered in the ADT or the Admit Discharge Transfer System on the patient's preferred language. It is also the place where you can enter the interpreter's name and either phone number or ID number if utilizing an interpreter line. Cultural Spiritual is the section to add the patient's beliefs. In the section found under the Religious Preference, if every question is a no or a yes, you can select the no or yes, and it will answer all fields at once. 
If there are variances in yes-no responses, simply click within that column to the appropriate answer. There is even a section for a spiritual advisor and phone number. The functional assessment has a myriad of various functional items that are pertinent to care of the patient in-house and also the preparation for the case managers and social workers and discharge needs coming up. Don't forget to scroll down for more data choices, particularly in this section, not all data may be relevant to each patient. The activity section is a survey on how active or sedentary the patient may be. The infectious history section has more required fields. This section also has messages in blue that tell the nurse that some answers trigger orders and answers to others will need further action by the nurse. The flu pneumonia vaccine screenings happen in this section. Influenza screening is mandatory from October through March. A pneumococcal screening is year-round. Each section has required fields and particular answers trigger other response groups. Pain history is important because it is setting the stage for present pain and past pains and what alleviation manners are typically used by the patient. The Columbia Suicide Screener has a pre-screener and an inpatient screener. These fields are conditional based upon answers entered. If a yes is answered to questions number one or end or number two, it will trigger the CCRS inpatient screener and multiple tasks post-documentation on the care of the patient. The psychosocial screening has information on emotional supporting and coping mechanisms. Next is sleep rest patterns, followed by social habits, smoking, vaping, alcohol, recreational drugs, and etc. are covered in this section. Nutritional screening triggers more conditional fields based upon answers entered, and depending on your answers, you have more blue text information that also instructs the nurse on future actions, including dietary consults. The abuse neglect screening is one with required fields, but also there is a safety assessment. Of note, some of the answers here can be subjective based upon if you, as the nurse, suspects abuse, and that maybe the abuser is present while the history is being obtained. The final segment of the adult admission history is called discharge needs. Similar to the functional section, this data greatly assists the case managers and social workers in preparing for discharge prior to the actual discharge order and date. Upon completion of the adult admission history, select the green check mark to save. If you aren't finished and you need to save your work and complete it later, then select the save disk icon. You will need to remember to complete the missing data. Earlier, we selected yes to the patient having a preferred pharmacy. We may have even written down that pharmacy to come back to it. Now we can select the patient pharmacy icon from the toolbar. Here we can adjust our search by pharmacy name, address, city, state, or a combination of multiple filters. We can even change our search from the defaulted retail to mail order, and there is even a filter that will locate 24-hour pharmacies as well. Here we are searching for CVS, and we have found our CVS location to select. We'll click on the pharmacy to highlight it, and then right-click on it and select Add to Patient Preferred. Once done, select the OK button. Selecting Patient Pharmacy again, you can review the Patient Preferred Pharmacy. Having this on every patient is important because the state is looking for electronic prescriptions and the physician cannot submit the script electronically without a listed preferred pharmacy. Congratulations, you have reached the end of lesson number four, adult admission history. Up next is lesson number five, medication history.